So today we're going to talk about principles, and this is going to be interesting because if you're a software engineer, you're probably going to think I'm going to talk too much about return on investment and those kind of things. If you're a finance person, you're probably going to think I'm not talk about, I'm going to talk enough about it. So we're going to talk about it from a practical viewpoint and from a management decision-making viewpoint. We'll look at the formulas a little bit, but we're going to really think about what happens in software systems and, and what is the value. If you look at return on investment, there's really a very high-level process. It involves determining and quantifying the benefits over time, benefits generally, uh, financial, although there can be other benefits, uh, determining the total cost of ownership against the schedule, so figuring out the cost and then the, the benefits, and then determine if the project is worthwhile, either on its own or as a part of a portfolio. Now, there's some interesting things that uh, people say about return on investment in software. Some people say that up to 80% of all software systems never produce a positive return on investment. That says that they never generate more revenue or profit than they, than they cost, which is pretty frightening. Obviously, in many cases, there are reasons that you build systems that are not for profits, but, but as we advance in the world of software development and software and IT, I believe that as we look at, at the returns on investments, we can actually help make IT part of the solution rather than part of the problem, as many people think it is today. And if you look at the costs and the value, the obvious costs are development costs and maintenance costs and IT infrastructure costs and IT services costs, uh, training costs and things like that. The guy that comes around and installs your, your updates, the, the help desk person, the training, all those things. The value, return on the investment, how much are you getting back for the investment in the costs? Internal rate of return, and I'll define these more in a little bit, but but what is the what is the internal interest rate that you're making if you if you do these things? And are, are there better ways to use the money? When looking at at costs and spending money from a corporate viewpoint, it's it's usually best to look at how you get the best return. And if you can do something that gets a higher return versus something that gets a lower return, the one with a higher higher return is generally the best one to do. Uh, net present value, which is talking about what's a, what a, a dollar tomorrow is worth less than a dollar today. And if we look at net present value, we can figure out in today's dollars, we can normalize everything to what, what something might cost or what the value might be today. I'll go through this in, over more, um, in a few minutes. And then, of course, the intangibles. You know, what, does it make uh, users happier? Does it, uh, does it uh, uh, make more customer satisfaction, et cetera? Now, the whole thing about return on business value is an interesting concept. Many people say, well, we're the software people. Our, our job isn't to, to figure out the value to the business. Our job is to implement what they want. If you look at economics or software economics, it's primarily a science of choice. Uh, software economics should provide methods for analyzing the choices that software projects must make. And Eli Goldride, who's one of my heroes in looking at ROI and business value, says, Base the choices on those that provide the maximum business value to the organization. That says if you have a portfolio or potential portfolio of projects or programs, do the ones that are going to generate the most business value. Now, again, I understand sometimes there are infrastructure programs that need to be done that won't generate anything specifically, but when doing the trade-offs, trade-offs so that you do the things that produce value to the business. Now, again, many people in IT will say, that's not our job. Our job is to build it. But if you look at the analysis capabilities of, 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 of software people and of IT people, we're often the ones that have the ability to do the analysis to determine what the return on investment might be. So I believe we need to start building systems that optimize on that business value and make IT part of the solution and actually offer and help to do the, the return on investment in various analyses so that we can give the, the potential user base the, that information back so they can make the best decisions. You've all probably seen a slide like this a million times. You know, there's crisis in IT. And uh, if you look at some of the things, Cutter Consortium says that uh, about 62% of projects overran their original schedule by more than 50%. 64% were more than 50% over budget. And 70% had serious problems when they were released. And, of course, everybody's seen the Standish, Standish information. Uh, I got an article uh, recently from someone that was disputing Standish, and they were they were generally upset that Standish was quote, wrong. And whether Standish numbers are perfect or not, I think, isn't, isn't really the point. The point is that we have problems, and I think everybody recognizes we have problems in software. And whether it's 46% challenged and 19% failed or 30% challenged and 20% failed isn't the point. The point is that software projects 
are, are, in, are in crisis in many ways. You know, we build systems that cost more than we promised. They take longer than we promised. They don't have the functionality. They don't work. If you look at the, the overall budget for IT in the, in the world, about $875 billion is spent annually on IT, about $300 billion on IT projects. If you do the math, about 57% of the, uh, of, I'm sorry, $57 billion are generally wasted annually. That's about 22% of the average IT bus budget wasted on failed or challenged projects. Now, we can say that's a, a difficult thing to, to waste uh, uh, that much money, but let's think of some of the other things. What if, instead of having the challenge or failed projects, what if we could figure out which ones would have the most business value and would, do the, would provide the best return. In addition to not wasting money with failed projects, we can start making the decisions to make IT provide projects that have the, the best value, the best contribution back to the company. Once again, Eli Goldratt, uh, uh, brilliant. If you haven't ever read Eli Goldratt's work, I highly recommend it. Uh, he talks about how the, the total core metric for for software is the value provided back to the business. Spend money where you obtain the most value. And value means savings to the company or additional revenue due to the software. In so many cases, the software doesn't provide any value. The users are enamored with the concept. The developers want to do it because it's cool. There's no analysis of what's going to happen uh, or how it's going to change the business. And more than that, many times we in software will build systems, but we don't get the company to change the business rules or the processes. And the software just plunked into a, 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 an organization without a change in process often is a failure as well. MRT, uh, material, pro uh, uh, real material processing systems, uh, are a classic example of that. Many years ago, everybody thought that it was going to be a huge savings to, uh, to the industry, and people invested. And, and the, the point was they were going to be able to do this great thing with buying in quantity and, and really doing a better, better value for the company. But what happened was the systems were purchased and they were used by the people that did the buying and things. What, what didn't happen is processes didn't change. So instead of having these great, great savings to the organizations, there were no savings at all. A few people may be less doing, uh, uh, doing, doing the work, but these systems ended up virtually never producing a return on investment, a positive return on investment. They usually cost more than they, than they, uh, they generated. Not because the systems weren't well designed, not because they weren't used properly, but because the organizations didn't change their own business processes to use these systems and, 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 and to optimize them. So here we are, the IT people, the analysts, the software people, the people that should be looking at such issues. And I believe, again, we need to look back into the business process areas into the, uh, and uh, as well to see how to, how to provide value. Now, I understand in many organizations this is politically uh, not going to happen, and if that's the case in your organization, then, then do the best you can. But in many organizations, they're really hungry for the help to figure out how to best get value. One of the problems, and this is an, uh, this is an article out of the uh, Harvard Business Review, one of the problems we have as humans is we're all hardwired to be optimists. And it may go back to our ancestors who had to go out and hunt and you know, and if they hunted and they shot an arrow or whatever and missed the prey, they, you know, they didn't stop and just say, ah, I'm depressed. But they went and did it again because they wouldn't eat if they didn't. So according to this Harvard Business Review article, human beings are hardwired to be that way. So we're all optimists. We generally exaggerate the benefits and discount the costs, not intentionally, but because we're hoping we'll do things righter this time. We'll do things better this time, smarter this time. The problems we had last time won't happen. And again, the optimism is traced back to biases in our, in, in our, own, in our own psyches and also to organizational pressures. So most of us are highly optimistic most of the time. Now, I know we all know some people that are pessimistic all the time. Some people tell me, I say the glass.